Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about how to create a page in Adobe Spark. We're going to go through the steps of creating a free Adobe ID account and creating your first Spark page. So let's get started. First, open any web browser and go to spark.adobe.com. Now Spark is a free to use online application, which means as long as you have access to any browser or for those of you with an iOS device, you can download the free Spark apps, you have access to create rich content. To get started, once you're at Adobe, uh, Adobe's webpage here for Spark, go ahead and click on Login. From here, if you don't have a free Adobe ID, simply click on one of the three options over here in the left column. For those of you with a college account that's tied to Google, you can go ahead and continue with your Google account now. Once you have that account set up, simply click on Login with Adobe ID. And from here, simply log in. Once you've logged into Spark, you're going to be taken to your dashboard. Now, if you've never created anything in Spark before, Adobe will give you on the screen various different samples or templates that you might be able to use. What you're looking for in order to use Spark, in fact, in order to navigate anything in Spark, is something that we call the ubiquitous plus symbol. So go ahead and look for the plus symbol on your page or look for the link that says a Spark page. I'm going to click this plus symbol right now and I have a couple of options available to me. In Spark you have the ability to create simple static graphics that you can post on social media accounts. You have the ability to create web pages which is the option we'll choose in just a second. And then you also have the ability to create videos with even voiceover narration. We'll get into that in a separate video. For right now go ahead and click on web page. From here, you can scroll down and you can see some additional templates that Adobe has set up to try to help you create a page that fits your particular needs. In our case, we're going to go ahead and utilize Spark to create a page that is a review for a piece of literature. Let's say you're doing an essay or a book report or possibly even a historical essay. So under Teach and Study, I'm going to go ahead and choose this option right here. When you get started, Spark will show you the first part of your web page. Throughout the entire creation of your web page, Adobe has created areas that will entice you to click on them and make edits, as well as there are various buttons that you can click on to add various elements to your Spark page. This is the top, or what we call the hero portion, of our web page. It requires us to go ahead and set up a title, a subtitle, which is optional, and to go ahead and place a photo in the background. Now, for this particular demonstration, let's say we're going to do an essay or a historical essay on a poem. It's a poem that probably many of you are familiar with. So to get started, I'm going to go ahead and click Add a Title. And I can simply add my title right here. Once I'm done with my title, I'm going to click to add a subtitle. So in this case, if you haven't already guessed, we're going to talk about the historical uh, influences of Francis Scott Key's original poem, Defense of Fort Henry. So in this case, my subtitle might be historical, uh, let's say historical background of Francis Scott Keys, excuse me, Keys, <laughs> Defense of Fort McHenry. And yes, I realize I misspelled defense, but this is an old English word, so it's spelled that way. All right, that looks good to me. Now, the next thing is I want to get rid of this gray background. And to do that, it's really simple. Again, look for the ubiquitous plus symbol. So in this case, I'm going to click the plus symbol and Spark is prompting me to add a photo. 
So I'm going to choose this. And over here in the left hand column, we have a lot of options that are available to us. We can upload a photo if we have one on our desktop. Conversely, if you also have the ability to uh, use Adobe Stock or your Creative Cloud account, you can go ahead and pick photos from your library here. Same thing if you have a Dropbox or Google Photos or possibly a Google Drive account. But one of the best features of Spark is Adobe's addition of freely available photos for you to use in your websites. So click on this option right here to find free photos. Now in this case, the original poem of Defense of Fort McHenry, the lyrics became the Star Spangled Banner. So in this case, I want a nice big image of the Star Spangled Banner. So I'll go ahead and just type US flag in my search and hit return. And if you'll notice, we can scroll through and there's a lot of, wait, this one looks really good right here. There is a lot of different images that you can choose from. So I am gonna go ahead and choose this image because that looks perfect for my top image. I'm gonna click once and that image is automatically placed right here in the top of my screen. Now, you may or may not like the way that the text is currently styled. You may not like the typeface, you may not like the colors. That's okay, because one of the other things that you can do with your Spark page is you can change what Adobe calls themes. In fact, in the top right-hand corner of your screen, you'll notice there's a button that says themes. And from here, we can actually choose and change the theme of our entire presentation. A simple click changes the way everything looks. Some are a little better than others depending on what type of uh, presentation you're actually doing. I like Baldwin for this. It's very bold, so we're gonna go ahead and keep that one. I'll go ahead and close my themes and I'll go ahead and continue. If you'll notice now down at the bottom, instead of the plus symbol, you now have a prompt. It says, scroll to start writing your story. So let's do that. So if I scroll down, I get another prompt from Adobe Spark. Now it's asking me, what sort of content area do I wanna create? And if you notice, there's a lot of different options available to you. I can add another photo, I can add some text, a button maybe to a link somewhere else, I can even add video. A photo grid, if I've got some sort of maybe a, a gallery of photos that I wanted to show off for this particular assignment. You even have certain things like slideshows and you can even do a split layout where maybe you have two columns. One column will have an image and the other column will have text. In fact, you know what? Let's go ahead and create a split layout. So go ahead and choose that now. Spark will scroll down the page. If you notice, there's our hero and gives us two panes to look at. We have a pane over here that says add your image and another pane with again the plus symbol. In the middle is a double arrow. If you click on it, it will swap the two columns, moving the image to the right and whatever you want to add to the left. We're going to go ahead and leave the image on the left hand side and again add your image. Now in this case, again, when we pop up the image viewer, it's right back where we were previously, where we searched for the US flag. But in this case, I actually have a photo of Francis Scott Keyes. So if I choose my images folder, I actually have a photo right here of Francis Scott Key. So I'm gonna go ahead and click open on that. It will open, automatically upload my photo and center it inside of that column. Now that I have the photo, I can add the information. So again, click on the plus and add text. And here, let's just go ahead and start off by talking a little bit about the author. Now, if you want to format text after you've typed it, highlight it, and the format options show up. You have the ability to create different headings, an H1 is a high priority heading. Think of this as like a headline. A second level heading, H2, is like a subtitle or subheading. You can create quotes, lists, either unordered or ordered lists. You can make things bold, italic, and even add hyperlinks if you choose. 
So in my case, I'm gonna make this a heading. That looks good. Next, I wanna add some text so we know exactly when he was born and when he died. So I'll say August 1st, 1779 through January 11th, 1843. In this case, the text isn't quite centered, so I'm gonna highlight this, and in my alignment options, click center. I could go further and add additional blocks of text explaining his early life, where he was born in Maryland in 1779, but for right now, let's just say that this section is complete. To move on to the next section, we'll simply scroll down. In this section, let's say I want to split up the content of the biography of the author with the most important aspect, the events leading up to the creation of the poem Defense of Fort McHenry, which in this case was the Battle of Baltimore in 1814 during the War of 1812. In order to separate this out, I want to kind of create an image as a divider instead of just having a bunch of white space. So again, down here at the bottom when I scroll down, Spark gives me that additional prompt, and in this case, I want to go ahead and insert another photo. So go ahead and choose insert photo. And from over here, I'm going to find a free photo again. And for the search, I'm going to type revolutionary war. So I don't know if there's any photos for war of 1812. So let's see if we can find a good photo of some British soldiers. And sure enough, there's a good photo of British soldiers during that time period. I'm going to go ahead and click to add that. And when you do this, now when you add these photos, you have the ability to change exactly how you want this photo to be displayed. If you'll notice down here at the bottom, you have the ability to add a caption. I can choose to fill screen, and that gives me a nice full screen for the actual image. So as I scroll through, you can kind of see it creates this, what we call a parallax effect. All of these are automatically added, which is fantastic. I can also change this to make it into a window. So it's kind of like a, a little, uh, a small little slit in my website that I can actually see through. I can make it a full width window, which doesn't have that parallax effect, nor does it have the uh, caption over the image, but I do have the caption underneath. For this one though, I'm gonna go back to that fill screen. I, I like this effect that Adobe's automatically built in here. And for the caption, I'm going to go ahead and type Battle of Baltimore, 1814. That's going to be my caption. I'll scroll on down. And now what I want to do is I want to create a section where I can talk a little bit more about the events of the Battle of Baltimore that led to Francis Scott Key writing his poem that eventually became the Star Spangled Banner. So in this case, I want to go ahead and create another split layout. Except this time, instead of having the photo on the left side, I'm going to click the double arrow and put it on the right. Again, I have a photo for this, so I'm going to go back to add an image, go back to the add photo pane, and click upload photo. For this one, I've got an old painting of Francis Scott Key sitting on the deck of the British ship while he's watching Fort McHenry being bombarded by the British. I'll go ahead and open that one, and that's added over here. And just like we did before, I can go ahead and start adding my text. Or let's say we did that in the caption above. So let's say the bombardment of Fort McHenry. And again, I'll highlight that, make that a Henry, excuse me, a heading, and then I can add additional text here talking about the actual bombardment. Finally, let's say we're done with our report and we want to add a little piece of media to this. As an example of how Francis Scott Key's poem became a cultural icon. So if we scroll down here, the next option we're going to choose is video. 
And the video that I've got is this one right here. For sports fans, this might be familiar. I will go ahead and copy and paste in the link from YouTube. Now notice, Adobe allows you to use any link from YouTube, Vimeo, or a Spark video that you've created yourself. Once you've pasted in that link, click Save, and the video will automatically be loaded. If you need to cite this particular video, I'll go ahead and put a caption underneath it by adding text. I'll add that up here. And maybe we'll make this a quote. That looks good. Okay, that does it. Creating a Spark page is easy, it's fun, and with a lot of the free assets that Adobe gives you access to, as well as the ability to create rich media such as YouTube videos, you can do pretty much anything to create an engaging interactive report. When you're done, you can go ahead and start by previewing your page. So if you click preview, this is what the website would actually look like, starting here at the top. And as we scroll down, you'll notice we've got a very well put together, well laid out, interactive and engaging presentation. Furthermore, and this will make the English professors in the audience happy, down here at the bottom, one of the great things that Adobe actually does is anytime you use the images that they provide, they actually add cited credits at the bottom of the page. Now for the images that I've actually created or inserted into this document, I have an ability when I go to share this page to add those to the credit section. So let's talk about sharing for a moment. I'm gonna close the preview. And when I'm ready to put this live on the internet, click on the share button. I wanna publish and share this link. From this window, I want to make sure that I have a proper title and choose a category. So I'll choose this is education. Your author's name will be placed right there. And here is where you have the ability to add your photo credits. So I can add additional uh, source material or cited material here for the other images that I uploaded as well as the video that I added of Gladys Knight singing the Star Spangled Banner. You can even adjust the way the credits are listed from Adobe. So if you need to put something in, say, an MLA style, you have the ability to do it here. Finally, unless you want your project posted on the big Adobe directory of Spark pages, you can go ahead and turn that option off to get noticed. And when you're done, simply click Create the Link. Spark will compile your page, create a link, and present you with a link that you can copy and send to your instructors or your friends or whomever you want to share your amazing Spark page with. And with that, you're all done. When you're ready to create another page or dabble in some of the other areas like graphics or videos that Spark has to offer, all you need to do is click on the Spark icon in the top left hand corner to be taken back to your dashboard where you will see all of the various projects you have created in Spark.